bigger breath. Bigger breath. Come on. Ah! Here it is. This is it. This is the one. Ah! Oh, I'm walking out. Had a baby. Got it. Yes. Nice, Santa baby. Oh. Welcome to the technical part of the squat video. I'm going to break this down into three parts. Part number one is going to be the proper setup, including body position, bar position. Number two is going to be the descent, uh, lowering your body down to the bottom position. And number three is going to be the ascent, coming from the bottom back to the top position. Before we get started, I want you to understand that squatting isn't as highly technical as a lot of people make it out to be. Um, yes, it requires a basic understanding of technique, but you don't need a 40-page manual to know how to squat properly. Um, if you want to learn about every little eccentricity uh, and what there is to know about every little part of biomechanics when it, when it comes to squatting, uh, there's a lot of there's good information out there. But you do not need to know all of that to learn how to squat safely and effectively. Uh, my goal today is to basically give your natural technique back to you. You've actually been squatting all your life. If you've been sitting in a chair and getting out of a chair, you already know how to squat. And again, my goal is to give you your natural ability back. Uh, with that said, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is proper bar position. I'm going to have to turn around to demonstrate. The bar needs to be placed on the top of your posterior delt. Very simply, right here. Now a lot of people try to place the bar much too high on the top of their traps. Uh, it's easy to place it here. It feels relatively comfortable, but there are some inherent dangers uh, specifically to the, the uh, cervical vertebrae and it causes some leverage difficulties uh, when someone is squatting. So you want to place the bar here. And before you place the bar there, before you accept the bar, you don't want to just accept the bar with your muscles relaxed. You must take your upper back musculature, your trapezius, and your other scapular adductors and squeeze them together. It will form a natural shelf for you to place the bar on. You want to also make sure that you grab the bar very, very tightly. Um, as well as tightening all the muscles in your entire body, creating whole body tension. This is before you even get the bar out of the rack. You must maintain this whole body position and throughout the entire set until the bar is re-racked. Only at that point should you release. Again, bar should be placed on the posterior delts, not up here high on the traps. Another point concerning bar position. Uh, I want to uh, address a misconception that a lot of trainees have. When the bar, uh, a lot of trainees believe that by placing the bar higher on the traps, it's going to give them a more upright position when they squat. And that upright position they feel is going to give them more quad development. Um, that isn't actually true. By placing the bar higher on your traps, What's going to happen is, is that when the weight gets sufficient enough to even start working your legs, it's going to make it nearly impossible to maintain even a normal or natural or optimal forward lean, torso lean, while maintaining an arch in the lower back or maintaining spinal extension. So the mistaken belief that's going to keep you upright more is actually working against you and it's going to actually make it so much harder on your lower back that it's going to bend you over more than what is optimal for your body type. Again, you want to place the bar in a position where you're going to have as much leverage as possible so you can squat as safely as possible which in turn will allow you to move as much weight as possible over the long haul. And that is what, it's going, to, is what it's going to develop uh, or give you great Great, all over. Once Leg you get the bar out of the rack, the next thing you got to be concerned with is proper foot positioning. Now, there's a lot of mistaken beliefs here. First of all, a lot of trainees think that because of a certain spacing, they're going to work a particular part of the leg. A wide stance is going to work more. The inner thigh, a narrow stance, you're going to get more quads, so on and so forth. Even if there is some validity to that, what you want to do is to find, if you want the most development possible in your leg musculature, you want to find an optimal stance that is best for your particular length of levers. 
that stance is going to allow you to, to handle as much weight as possible, as safely as possible, therefore allowing you to build as much leg and all over body mass as possible. Now, even with all the genetic variation out there, the stance that I'm going to show you to start with, which is going to be considered a medium to medium wide stance, uh, is only going to vary roughly two inches wider or two inches more narrow than I'm going to show you. And almost all trainees are going to fit into that range. Um, and that's going to be mostly dependent on, on a trainee's uh, leg length or, or their overall body height. Um, and the same goes for toe spay. Everyone's toes are going to be turned out to some degree. Uh, some very little, some, some pretty far. Um, again, we're going to start in a medium position and then you'll only need to, to do, what you'll need to do is to just tweak that a little bit uh, an inch or two here or there depending on how the movement feels. Um, with that said, let me go ahead and, and get you started. A good I want you to start think of, thinking of squatting as lowering your hips and your torso in between your legs. I think a lot of people think of squatting as lowering your body down on top of your legs. You're actually lowering your hips and your torso in between your legs. In order to do that effectively, you must be able to push your legs out to the sides. By pushing your legs out to the sides, you're going to get proper alignment of the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Therefore, promoting great safety and great leverage. And great leverage is, again, going to allow you to handle as much weight as you can possibly handle. What it looks like is, and we'll cover this a little bit more in the descent, is when you start to lower, the knees must be pushed out to the sides and held out to the sides as follows. A lot of trainees make a major mistake, make a major mistake in letting the knees, what is known as translate inwards. That can cause a lot of cartilage problems as well as limiting the amount of weight that you can handle, not optimizing your leg musculature. So what you want to do is you want to keep these knees pressed out to the sides. As I have them now, my knees are in perfectly alignment with where my toes are pointing, my foot is pointing, and with my hip joint. Same with this, just like this, but I am purposely holding them out. Again, a lot of trainees just leave them relaxed and let them tuck in like this. Again, can cause a lot of cartilage problems and you're definitely losing leverage. There's a leakage of force right here. So by keeping them out, everything is nicely aligned and it makes it strong to drive up out of the hole. You're going to base your foot spacing and your amount of spay on your ability to keep your knees out. When you go down, just like this, keeping them out to the side. Some people may have to have their toes turned out more. Some may not need them out as much. But the key is to get these joints lined up. Again, giving you as much leverage as possible. Just as so. Another aspect of squatting uh, that you really hear covered is the creation of whole body tension. Now I mentioned that uh, when I was talking to you about bar placement. The creation of whole body tension is absolutely necessary so that you can get the most strength production and the most safety out of performing the squat or any other exercise for that matter. Now, I'm going to do this facing you. Normally with squatting, you back up out of racks, but I'm going to come at you so I can demonstrate this properly. When you're approaching the bar, it all begins with the right attitude. You must come into this very aggressive. You need to channel that aggression at the start into what comes down to flexing all the muscles in your body, even before you start the squat. I've seen too many trainees simply come into the squat, place the bar, even if it's placed properly on the back, simply Set, set up in a relaxed fashion. That does not optimize your body's strength potential. What you need to do is to grab the bar as absolutely as tight as you can, starting with the tension in your forearms and generating tension throughout your body. Before you accept the bar, you squeeze your upper back as hard as possible, and then the rest of your body, its musculature, is tight. You must come out of the rack tight where nothing is moving, where you are one rigid piece. Now a lot of trainees come out of the racks much too loose and they don't even think about tightening up. Uh, if at all, 
uh, until they start the motion. You need to be tight before you even begin to accept the bar and that tightness in the entire body remains until the bar is re-racked. Again, that will give you the greatest potential to generate as much strength as possible as safely as possible. Now let's talk about the descent. The number one problem I see in trainees is that they distort what is already a natural movement for their body. Sitting in a chair. Sitting in a chair is squatting. Let me give you a little example and see if this doesn't relate to how you squat or how you've been taught to squat. Most trainees, either through reading or through an instructor, have been taught that they got to keep their back arched or their back upright, more specifically is how they're taught, and they got to look upwards. How many do you see sit in a chair like this? Doesn't look very natural, does it? Now compare that to how your body naturally moves sitting into a chair. When you come in to sit in a chair, you'll do this. The first thing you'll do is you'll bend over, which shoots the hips back, and you sit backwards, just like that. Now, when you come to rise out of the chair, you'll regain your normal lean, a natural torso lean, and then you'll rise up perfectly. Again, compare that to how a lot of trainees understand mistakenly or misunderstand how they're supposed to squat. Head up, arch their back, back's very upright, like this. How many people do you see sit in a chair like that? Again, it's not very natural. Now, I'm going to show you a little experiment here. You can try this on yourself. Let's try to get up out of a chair while maintaining a perfectly upright back. What I want you to do is get your back as straight up and down as possible. As straight up and down as possible. Now, the rules are you can't move your feet. Once positioned like this, you're not allowed to move them forward or backwards or out. You're not allowed to move them anyway. Now, you must maintain a perfectly upright back. Now, try to rise out of a chair from this position. You can't. What you'll find is that you'll fall backwards. If you try to maintain an upright back and rise out, all you'll do is fall, continue to fall backwards. Again, as I demonstrated earlier, what you'll naturally do is you'll lean over, establish your body's particular angle of forward lean, and then you'll rise up. Just like that. Again, maintaining an upright back, it's impossible. All you'll do is push back into the chair and fall over backwards. You must allow your body to lean over. Now, let's go ahead and relate this to the squat. Once you've got the bar placed properly, of course you'll back out of the racks from having to come straight at you, you'll establish a medium wide stance. Now again, I told you how to determine the optimal stance for your particular body type. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn sideways. Now, applying what we just learned with the chair example, what you want to do is allow your torso to bend over. Again, that is the number one mistake, the number one misunderstanding, the number one mistake I see trainees make, and the number one mistake, the, the number one misunderstanding most trainees have about squatting. You cannot squat upright. I just showed you how you can't get out of a chair with an upright back. An upright back when I say an arch back, I do not mean an upright back. An arch back with a proper torso lean, just like sitting in a chair. Again, this already exists in you if you don't try to distort it. Let it happen. Arch your back and allow your body to bend over. Your hips will naturally shoot back. This will maintain the bar right over the mid, the mid part of your foot, which is, which is giving you perfect balance. And it will self-adjust, dependent on your body's particular length of levers. The body will find the optimal, the optimal path. So, arch your back, allow your body to bend over. Now, while you're doing this, you need to keep those knees pushed out till you descend to the bottom. Now, my back is still flat, but notice 
Notice my degree of torso lean. Now this is my specific, the way I'm levered. This is my particular degree of bend. Yours may be a little more upright or a little more over. But this is what is optimal for me. Just like this. I'm keeping my knees out and my eyes are straight forward. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the part about looking up. Let me go into that a little bit more. The, the idea for teaching you to look up when you squat is to help to supposedly keep your back arched or more upright. Well, I already showed you how you can't squat with an upright back, a perfectly upright back. The other problem there is that it can be potentially very dangerous for your cervical area. What, once again, what is natural is to look straight forward. You don't look up when you're trying to sit in the chair or sit on the toilet. You look straight ahead, just like this. Again, arching your back and allowing your body to bend over and pushing your knees out to the sides. It's really that simple. Your torso is down in between your legs, your knees are held out, back is arched, and you drive up. You've been sitting in a chair like this all your life. What you need to do is to allow it again. Let me reiterate. When you go to descend, you must allow your torso to bend over. You must push your knees out to the sides. That your body will then find the optimal position of torso lean if you allow it to happen. The thing you've got to focus on is just keeping your lower back arched. And that will give you the perfect natural descent that already exists in you. Alright, now let's talk about coming up out of the bottom of the squat. The most important thing that you need to do once you establish or once you are at the bottom position is, is something I touched upon on the descent and in proper body position. The knees must be kept out to the sides. You cannot let them translate in, which is what's going to be the natural thing that your body might try to do, especially if you've been squatting incorrectly for years, because there'll be a muscular imbalance going on between the muscles that pull the, pull the legs, pull the femur inward, and the, and the muscles that hold it out. So, the number one thing you want to concentrate on when you come out of the bottom is to keep these knees pressed out to the sides as you come up. That will keep all the joints, the major joints, in alignment, the major joints responsible for squatting, the ankle, the knee, and the hip. There will be a perfect flow of force from the floor up into the hips, up into the spine, which will move the bar. Again, knees held out. Now, upon the ascent, you keep these knees out and drive. You'll drive through the heels. Knees out, from out of the bottom. Now, you don't need to lift your toes off the ground. It's just kind of naturally happening with me. But your weight, a lot of your weight, most of your weight will be on your heels. From here, keep your knees out to the sides and simply push. Again, squatting is not that complicated. I want to 